Right, this is stage 3.1, waxing a full gold crown. So in this stage then we're going to wax up the gold crown. We don't want it sticking to the die, so the first thing we do is use some separating uh, solution and this is isolate, that's just the trade name for it. That gets painted all over the die, well over the margins. You'll see that I've got it just next to the Bunsen there, that's not a very good idea because it's, no. it's highly flammable. Yeah. And then the excess is just taken off using a, using a tissue, um, otherwise it'll just make the wax bubble. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just let that soak in just for, a, just for a minute or two. And then the first layer of wax we're going to put on by dipping it into this, what we call a hotty pot serra dip that you can see there's just the, the trade name again. So we're going to dip it into the molten wax. And there we keep the lid down so it stays up to temperature. Mm -hmm dip it down past the margins and then we're going to bring it up and just touch it on the side to get rid of the excess and then uh, hold it in mid-air and just let it cool. Lid down, keep the pot mm. hot. Watch your fingers on the edge of that pot, it's a tad warm. Mm. Um, this wax is much more flexible than the wax you might have used to been working with. It's almost sort of plasticky flexible, isn't it? Yeah. So um, when working with it, you have to be very careful and you want that to be quite a sharp knife as you go around. Yeah. It's purposely flexible yeah. so that you can um, pull it off the mm. die easily. The disadvantage is that the margins aren't quite as accurate. So you will see that some people will um, cut the wax away from around the margin and replace it with some of the blue inlay wax that you will be mm. familiar with, which is brittle and uh, more accurate. Okay, so we've got your rubber gloves on here. Yeah, we've got to try and get this thing off the die. Here it goes. Try not to break it. It's gone a bit more brittle now that it's fully cold. Oh, straight off, first time. It's not unknown for some people to have to go through this sequence a couple of times until yeah, they get a, bit, a coping in their hand. It's a bit like the first pancake mm. out of the. Yeah pan kind of scenario you need to mm -hmm. do it once or twice all right so this right. is your inlay wax now this yeah. is um what you this is the much more brittle more accurate wax it doesn't contract so much as it cools you would have used this before yeah. probably in the first year in stick form this is just in a tin it's exactly the same same material so dive back into the model then for this stage first thing um you'll see being done is the contact points being built up uh, with the adjacent teeth so taking a small amount of wax adding it to the distal to start with I think yep then we're going to put that back in the model and just form the contact point with the adjacent tooth just let it cool slightly make sure you don't lift the coping as you do that yep, you've just pressed it down there to make sure yep. Yep. and you can just see the contact that's going to be repeated on the mesial aspect now so that's giving you both the mesial and distal extent of your crown so you know where you can work. When you're doing this, it's, you've got to control the temperature with the wax. If it's too hot, you're going to go straight through the um, underlying layer and stick the whole lot to the, to the dye, which mm. is uh, a little bit annoying. Start again time, yeah. There you go. So there's loads of different techniques for going about building up these gold crowns. This is a bit of a hybrid technique that you're going to see. Some people start with a lot of wax and then carve back to form the shape. Some people build up the cusps very precisely using a fine point, and that's called the PK Thomas, Thomas technique. technique. Um, if you do it properly, there's all different colours of wax indicating the cusps and the most bulbous part of the crown and the mesial and buckle sides and things like that. You'll see some people still follow a hybrid of that technique as they build up. Um, that's the method I was taught and I, I prefer, but um, there are so many, it's a very personal thing. So you can see Duncan here doing sort of almost a, a hybrid of um, a number of techniques, really. <laughs> so I've just um, built up the, the cusps here, and I'm just using the opposing model to form the contacts. And that's going to give me sort of the, uh, the, the height of the cusps and the, the depths of the, uh, the fissures all at once and then once I've got the height of the cusps I can then form uh, as you can see here the buckle aspects of the cusps so just using a little bit more molten wax trying to control it so it's not going all over the place and leaving the, the bits that have been placed before intact not melting them at all leaving plenty of time for the wax to cool because uh, obviously you don't want to uh disrupt anything once you put the wax down. Make 
should be the last bit going onto the buckle aspect now. And then we'll have a closer look. You are just checking again, it's all about the temperature of the wax. Um, if you put it on too hot or your knife is too hot, you'll wipe out all the work you've done so far. So that was just uh, Duncan sort of checking himself almost before he uh, destroyed his crown. You're aiming to make this crown fit in with the adjacent teeth. It sounds silly, but uh, you want it to look like the adjacent teeth and the, the, the tooth on the um, opposite quadrant. So, for example, if there were crowns either side of this this tooth already, you wouldn't make it look like a um, a textbook natural tooth. You'd, you'd make it look like the crowns adjacent to it, so it fitted in. Well, that sounds obvious, but um, you would be surprised how many dental labs do produce just a model of crown, and it's often very over contoured, and they put sort of crow's feet in around the occlusional detail and scratch all sorts of detail in that just holds on to food particles. So um, when you are specifying your crown you can if you like specify what sort of occlusion you would like on it and it is um, it's quite trendy at the moment to have a very minimal occlusional surface just almost just a very almost polished flat minor features of the cusps on the surface to make it easy to clean. So this is you just cleaning everything up now, aren't you? Yeah. You're just um, giving it a bit of uh, contour around the buckle areas. Yeah. Just getting the shape right, making sure the cusps are the right shape. And this is just a little bit of tissue just to you take. Remember off this the, one from first year as well. And I'll just polish it up. And that should be the buckle aspect of the crown done there. Careful with the tissue around the bunsen. Yeah. There we go, looking good. Okay, so now we repeat the process but for the palatal cusps and then we'll be on to the occlusal surface. Mm. So you've skipped on a bit here, you've already made a start, haven't you? And you're just doing the sort of distal palatal surface now. Polishing up once more. Now we should talk about the thickness of the crown at this point as you're waxing up because the, um, the lighter coloured green of the coping is an indicator to when you're getting a bit thin. Yeah, the, the, the green wax tends to come out at about 0.3 to 0.5 millimetres thick when you pull it out of the hotty pot, depending on, on um, the temperature of the pot. We have got some measuring calipers so you can measure this um, to make sure you're not getting too thin. For casting we need at least um, 0.3 to 0.5 of a millimetre. Mm preferably 0.5. Especially if you're a bit heavy handed with the burrs for the first time of trimming one up. Yeah. So this looks like the final details going in there. Just shaping up the occlusal surface, putting the details in to match the adjacent teeth. worth mentioning that all this skill and practice is disappearing with the use of CAD CAM technologies because it is possible now to produce using the CAD CAM a plastic um, crown in the same way we've produced a wax one here which would also then be cast in the same way so progress there we are contacts with the uh, opposing model I'm just pointing out where it might might be improved a little bit on the distal cusp. It's not bad, but yeah, nice profile. And then the occlusion. That's the finished article. Job done. Excellent.